In this video, we're going to be coding the insertion sort algorithm in Java. Although it's not the fastest sorting algorithm in the world, it's definitely one of the easiest to understand and one of the simplest to code. My name's John, I'm a lead Java software engineer, and I love sharing what I've learned with you in a clear and understandable way. The full source for this program is available in the link down in the description below, so go and grab it. I also have a full Java course available in the link down in the description if you're interested. All right, so I know it's really tempting to just jump into Eclipse and start coding, but before we do, we have to make sure we have a clear understanding understanding of how exactly the insertion sort algorithm works. But luckily, it's pretty straightforward. Let's say this is our array of numbers that we need to sort. All that insertion sort does is walk through this array from beginning to end and taking each value and inserting it into the sorted array wherever it goes. Let's walk through this example step by step. So we start with the first element, 3. A single element is always in order with itself, so we can just insert it. The next element is the number one, and we need to insert it in its proper place in the list, which is before the number three. Next, we have the number eight, and we insert it in its proper place, which is after the number three. Then we have the number six, which needs to be inserted between the three and the eight. Finally, we have the number two, which needs to be inserted between the one and the three. Once we have gone through each element in the array and inserted it into its proper spot, we know that we now have a sorted array. So you might be saying, okay, I understand the concept of an insertion sort, but how can I think about how we're going to actually code that insertion? Here's a great way to visualize that. Again, of course, we start with the number three, which is in order with itself. So we can just move on to the next number, one. What we're going to do is copy the value of this spot in the array out to a temporary variable. Then what we're going to do from here is walk backwards towards the beginning of the array. And for each element, if it is greater than one, we are going to shift it to the right. And we keep going back until we either reach the beginning of the array or we run into a number that is less than the number we're looking at. So in this case, three is greater than one. So we are going to shift it one spot to the right. In this case, since that's the beginning of the array, that's where we now insert our number one. Then we move on to the next element in the array, eight. We still copy it out to a temporary variable, then we start walking backwards towards the beginning of the array. And we compare the number that we find to the number eight. And again, if it's greater, we shift it right. In this case, three is not greater than eight. So we end up making no shifts and inserting eight into its correct spot in the array where it was. Next, we have the number six. Again, we copy six out to a temporary variable and then start walking backward toward the beginning of the array, and we compare each number that we run into to six. In this case, eight is greater than six, so we shift it to the right. Next, we compare three with six. Three is not greater than six, so we stop there and insert six into its correct spot in the array. The final element in our array is the number two. We copy that two out to a temporary variable. Eight is greater than two, so we shift it right. Six is also greater than two, so we shift it to the right. Three is also greater than two, so we shift it to the right. One is not greater than two, so we stop there, insert two, and since that was the final element, now we know that we have a perfectly sorted array. And now for the fun part, let's get coding. I'm starting here with a little bit of a setup just so we can easily test the sorting algorithm that we write. This first part will create an array of 10 random integers between zero and 99. That just gives us a randomized array that we can sort. Then we print out the unsorted array, then call this insertion sort method, which is going to contain the algorithm we're going to write. Then after that, print out the array again, hopefully in perfectly sorted order. So all the magic here is going to happen inside this insertion sort method where we're gonna write our algorithm. So let's do that right now. In this method, the array to be sorted is sent in as the input array parameter. So now remember from our example that we want to walk through our unsorted array from beginning to end, inserting our values where they go. So what we're going to start with is just a basic for loop to walk through the array. So for int i equals one, now you might be asking though, hey John, why aren't we starting with int i equals zero like we usually do in a for loop? But remember, in our example, this first element is already sorted with itself. There's never anything we need to do with it. So it makes sense to just start with the second element in the array, which is going to be at index one. To go through the entire array, we're going to go while i is less than the input array dot length. Then of course, i plus plus to iterate i each time. Remember how our program is going to work. For each value that we look at, we're going to take that current value and copy it off to a temporary variable. 
So to do that, we're just going to create an int and call it current value and set it equal to the value in that spot in the input array. So that would be input array of i. Next, we need to walk our way from the current element in the array back toward the beginning. And for each element that we run into that is greater than the current value that we're looking at, we need to shift it to the right. So how can we walk our way back from here towards the beginning of the array? We could probably do it with either a for loop or a while loop. In this case, I think a while loop is probably a little bit simpler. So we're going to use an int j to walk back towards the beginning of the array. And we want to initialize it to be one space before the value that we're currently looking at, which is i. So to have j reference the position right next to it, we just have to set j to i minus 1. Now we can start our while loop. Now our while loop is going to have a couple of conditions. The first is while j is greater than or equal to 0. Basically all that's going to do is make us stop walking back once we actually hit the beginning of the array. The other part of our condition, we're going to look at the value of that spot in the array at j and keep going while that value is greater than the current value that we're looking at at i. So this will have us walk back towards the beginning of the array and only stop when we either reach the beginning of the array or until we run into a value that's less than or equal to the current value that we want to insert. Inside this while loop is where our shifting right is going to happen. For example, in this case, we know that 3 is greater than 1, so we need to take the value at j currently, which is the number 3, and we want to shift it right by 1. So to do that, we need to take the input array at position j plus 1 and set it equal to the value of that input array at position j. So in this example, j is currently the position of this 3 here, right? So we're going to set the value at j plus 1 to be equal to the value at j. So it's going to look like this. Next, inside this while loop, to keep moving towards the beginning of the array, we just need to decrement j by 1. So to do that, we can just do j minus minus, which is the same thing as saying j equals j minus 1. So what this while loop is going to do is work its way toward the beginning of the array until it finally reaches the beginning of the array or it reaches a number that is less than or equal to the current value that it's looking at. And when it does, it'll pop out of this while loop. And that's when we need to insert this value that we're looking at into its correct spot. So to do that, we need to set the value at input array position j plus 1 and set that equal to current value. So in this case, what that will do is take this position here and set it to the value that we saved off as a temporary variable. All right, so let's go ahead and test our insertion sort algorithm with an array of 10 random integers. Okay, so it prints out the before in completely random order and then prints out the after and they are perfectly sorted. Awesome. And we can run it a couple more times to make sure it wasn't a fluke. And as you can see with this example, even if we get duplicates of the same number, like we have two threes here, it still does the right thing and keeps them right next to each other in the array. Now that we know that this works, let's have some fun and see how long it takes to sort really large arrays of numbers. So instead of just 10 numbers, let's do a thousand numbers. And also let's make those random numbers be between about zero and 10,000 instead of 100. All right, so that happened pretty instantaneously. It took less than one second. So let's step it up. Let's try 100,000. We go. Okay, that took a little bit longer. It took about six seconds. So let's try. 1 million. Here we go. Okay, it took a second just to print them out. Let's see how long it takes to run. Still hasn't finished. This one is taking quite a while. So sorting 100,000 elements took about six seconds. So you might think that sorting 10 times that amount, a million, is going to take 10 times as long, or about 60 seconds. But this algorithm has a time complexity of n squared which means that as you increase the number of elements that you want to sort, the amount of time it takes to sort those elements goes up exponentially. So the jump from sorting 100,000 elements to sorting a million elements could be a lot worse than you think. So I'm gonna let this run and we'll come back and see exactly how long it ends up taking. Okay, it finally finished. Looks like it ended up taking about seven minutes. That's not great. So this sorting algorithm doesn't make a whole lot of sense for sorting arrays larger than about 100,000 or so elements. Once you get beyond that, it starts taking just way too much time. Of course, this is far from the worst sorting algorithm we've looked at. Check out this video if you want to see one that is truly ridiculous and awful. 
And if you want to try creating a much faster sorting algorithm, check out my tutorial on Merge Sort. Either way, don't stop now and continue your Java learning by checking out one of these other videos. If you enjoyed this video or learned something, please let me know by hitting the like button and leaving a comment. And be sure to subscribe so you don't miss each new Java tutorial. As always, thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate having you here with me. I'll see you next time.